Hello, my friends. I'm the Wolfman, Dale Wolfley, and I'm coming to you from the second layer of the Wolf's Den. And what a day this is. It's for the Wolfman Ramble. Yeah, yeah, that's the review of the game that we just had. We had the Wolfman breakdown before the game, and now you got the Ramble. And you now I'm just so happy about this Ramble because it was a great victory over K-State, the Wildcats. You, we said, you know, skin the cats, man. The Mountaineers skin the cats without telling you. You go back to the games and you look at that and you're saying, wow, when's the last time the Mountaineers had dominated a top 25 team like that? And I'm going to tell you, you know who pointed this out to me? Was the signal caller, Jed Dredd. And he said it was the Orange Bowl. It was Clemson. And I look back at it and I'm saying, yeah, you're right. Offensively, defensively, and special teams. He shut it down. But man, that's that's good. I got you, signal caller. I'm giving you credit now. I'm not taking you, not taking your glory, brother. But I will say this is that the Wolfman Ramble about this today is so proud to have my sponsors on there with the you know doing the Wolf Den Extra with Little General Stores and Kegler Sports Bar and Grill. And I'm telling you now is Kegler Sports Bar and Grill, Monday night football. It's beat the clock wings, man. It's three to six. It's 50 cent wings, 69 and 60 cent wings, and nine to close. It's 70 cent wings, man. It is Monday night football. Then you go on Tuesdays for their daily specials, and it's $2 tacos for like three to close. $2, I mean, like pork, beef, chicken, chicken tacos. My goodness, it is good. I mean, I just crushed them, man. And then, of course, you have all you can eat baby back ribs on Wednesdays, like five to seven, $10.90. Are you kidding me? You, you tell me you can't. I mean, even like I said, the single caller, he would crush those and kickers would lose out on that. And then, of course, Thursday, you have the Neil Brown radio show. That's six to eight. But you have half price appetizers from five to seven. So you get there a little bit earlier. You get some half price appetizers. Then they got the award winning wings. You get the. you can ask. Coach Brown, a question. If you're nice to me, if you got a good question, uh, and it's reasonable. Last week, we raffled off a true WVU helmet signed by Coach Neil Brown. We have another one. I don't know if it's going off this week or not, but I know this is that we last week we did with a whole bunch of WVU official gear and hats, shirts, like Trust to Climb shirts. I mean, I put it out on, on Facebook. I've done it all. So the Neil Brown radio show, there's an exclusive live video feed by T.C., Tony Creedy, and Coach Brown from the Milan Pushkar Center. And it goes right into Kegler's, but you can only get it at Kegler's Sports Bar and Grill. You can't get there. You, you can't win the raffle unless you're there at Kegler's Sports Bar and Grill. You can't ask Coach Brown a question live on the air unless you're there at Kegler's Sports Bar and Grill. And, of course, you have the award-winning wings. you got the Wolfman Burger. You can get a New York Strip steak. I mean, Thursday nights are turning into my steak night. Then again, Friday nights do as well. So uh, during football season, it's a, it's a little bit more steaks than the normal, a little bit more red meat. But then you go on the Fridays and you got half price for alcohol, three to six. Can't beat that. And of course, then on Sundays, you have dollar off all wing special. So award winning wings, a Wolfman burger, Kegler Sports Bar and Grill. It's the place where Mountaineers go to watch Mountaineers. And again, Saturday at Texas. Better get there early because Mountaineers are going to go ahead and hopefully, hopefully, go in there, beat the crowd out of the Longhorns, right? Was that that is that what it is right there? Yeah, I think that's what it is. But anyways, I'm just saying this. Is that Kegler Sports Bar and Grill, greatest, greatest food. Uh, you get there and they support the Mountaineers, support them. Okay, the Wolfman Ramble. Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about K-State and how they absolutely came in here on a high, four-game high. They, they were going ahead and they were the number one team in the country in special teams for efficiency. They've had four block kicks, that's three punts, and a field goal. They led the Big 12 in interceptions. They had they led the nation in plus-minus turnovers. They were plus eight. Now I guess they're plus six. So they're not there anymore, but in interceptions, they were 10th in the nation as well. So they came in and they were scoring a lot of points off of special teams, field position with special teams, not making mistakes, physical play by both the offense, defense, and of course, special teams. And of course, they were scoring points off of their defensive setups. And, you know, what happened to Kansas State against the Mountaineers is it all stopped. 
<laughs> he got it like that. Well, it didn't stop because of magic. It didn't stop because they ran out of luck. It stopped because the mountaineers studied him and they knew what they had to do to shut him down. And I'm going to show you a little bit of that here in the ramble. I'm going to try to get this down here a little bit so that we're not, I'm not going so long. I get going and I just forget about what I'm doing because I'm I'm just talking mountaineer football, man. It's just, it, it, it is what it is. But I'm going to try to shut this down here this week a little bit after I show you some videos. And I want to give you some stats here where we are after six games right now. Letty Brown rushing is second in the Big 12, averaging 116 yards per carry. I mean, or per game. I'm sorry, excuse me, per game. He has a total of 694 yards. That's number two in the Big 12 to Iowa State's Brees Hall, who's averaging about 150 yards of rushing. So, obviously, he's got it going there himself. Then we go to the passing game. We look at Jared Deggie. And Jared is second in the Big 12 with 282 yards passing in game. That's He's got 11 touchdowns, uh, only three interceptions. He's got a 65% completion percentage pass rating. You know, and he's, he's doing well. I mean, the last three games, He's thrown the ball for over 300 yards. Uh, and, and again, he did not turn the ball over against K-State. That was huge, huge, huge. You know, then you go in the receptions of the game, you look at the top 10, and you got Winston Wright Jr. He's got, oh, who is he got? He's got 32 receptions, uh, averaging 65 yards per game. He has two touchdowns. He's number three, tied with Texas Tech, uh, Yuzakama. And then you have Sam James is number seven with 26 receptions. So we're, we're, we're there in numbers. We're doing things right. Winston Wright is third with 65 yards in the Big 12. So when, when you look at this and you say, hey, you know, how are the Mountaineers fairing up in the Big 12? Well, they're at the top of the list. And if you want to go to the defense, which, you know, obviously uh, is impressive. You look at Tony Fields. He's number two in the Big 12 in tackles. He's has 53 total tackles, and he missed three quarters of a game. Uh, and he's averaging about nine tackles per game a, against K-State. He had 15. You think he had a little bit of a chip on his shoulder? I think so. And I think he had something to prove, and he certainly proved it by being all over the field. He is sideline to sideline, or he's up the middle. Because you want to try to run up the middle? I'm going to show you that here a little bit he's going to get you because it's hard to hit him, hard to find him because he's so elusive so quick and he recognizes those plays like that really fast. In fact, that is the most tackles in a game since uh, David Long did it back in, in 2018 uh, for tackles. That's the most tackles. I mean, he's absolutely having a great year. But I'm going to say this. If you look at Darius Stills and his numbers are not – huge in the tackles department, but what is huge in is the stats that aren't kept. He's taking up the offensive linemen, and he is making sure that they are occupied so that people like Tony Fields or Josh Chandler Semedo or Alonzo Adai or Tyke Smith or any of those guys can come up and make tackles because he is freeing it up. The other defensive linemen are benefiting. I'm telling you, Akeem Messador, benefiting. Incredibly big time because Darius Stills is occupying so much and giving so such a great effort. I think he's playing at an elite, elite level, and I think that's paying off for him as well, for sure. But we've got to go to the scoring offense, and the Mountaineers are third in the Big 12 with 33 points. It's funny, you know, Texas is number two in the Big 12 at 37 and a half points. So that's, that's kind of close, right? So you go look at the scoring defense, West Virginia is number two behind Oklahoma State with 19.8 so they're giving up 20 points per game oklahoma state is giving up 10 points so oklahoma state is still doing fairly well but again mountaineers defense scoring is number two you know when you go to total defense the mountaineers are giving up 256 yards per game that's number one big 12 rushing defense they're number one giving up 98 yards so that, that's pretty darn good i mean again I am seeing this in, you know, pass defense. West Virginia is number one in the Big 12. Again, they're only giving up 158 yards. So when you go for, you know, the, the total defense, obviously they got to be number one. Uh, they're averaging giving up 4.2 yards and 256 yards per game in the Big 12? Are you kidding me? Are you telling me all this? Yeah, that's what I'm telling you, man. It's good. Great stuff, right? Absolutely. So let's keep moving out. Go back to K State. You want to talk about defense? 
The Mountaineers held K-State to 41 yards on the ground. Do you know that WVU is now, I was supposed to, less than 50 yards rushing twice and less than 100 yards rushing four times this season. So two times less than 50, two teams, and four teams less than 100. 256 yards of total defense, allowing 20 points per game. In the Big 12? Again, yeah. Great job, D. You got 11 players playing really well on that defense. And our special teams against Kansas State stepped up because they knew they had to. Because you want to win this game, you had to do two things, three things. You had to be physical. You had to be smart. I guess we'll put the self-discipline in there with smart. And then you had to be physical. You had to be smart. And you know what? You had to play your heart out, man. And when they went out and they did that, you know what they did? They shut down the number 16 team in the country in offense, defense, and special teams and held them and just punched them in the mouth, baby. Physical? Yeah, they were physical. All phases of the game, physical. Uh, and it was really exciting to see. Again, when I told you in the, the Wolfman breakdown for K-State, this was a doable game for the Mountaineers. I liked the way that they matched up against them. I liked the way, I mean, against Texas Tech, they did not play poorly. They ran into a team that was on the move. They ran into some things that hurt them, like Temple, the young team, saw it, wasn't really totally prepared until they took care of it in the second half. But again, I mean, it's, it is, the Mountaineers could have made some catches if they would have made a couple of stops probably rotated their defense in there a little bit better. But I mean, if Tony Fields was in there, right? If he wouldn't have gotten ejected at the end of the first quarter and he had three more quarters to play, a lot of that would have been taken care of in itself, uh, which I'm not even going to get into that call because I don't like it and I'm not going to go there. So the way the Mountaineers came out, I am jacked. The Wolfman Ramble this week is about this. I am jacked. I like the way this team was physical. I like the way this team was smart. Discipline, only five penalties. Five penalties, yeah. Now, KC don't have five penalties, but that's what they always do. They're always there because they're a self disciplined team. But they pounded K State, the Wildcats, into submission. And this is a physical team. And I'm going to show you a few plays here. But again, let's go over what the stats were for the game. Okay, net yards rushing. The Mountaineers had 184. Well, that puts them third in the Big 12. With, I think it's like uh, 172 yards uh, that they're rushing per game. Now, when you look at this, you're going to see a couple of things here today I want to point out to you is that they're been playing physical. They're not perfect. This is a moving process. This is a growing process. They have, for a lot of the times, they've got two freshmen playing the left side of the offensive line. They had a redshirt sophomore, Bryson Mays, had to come in and play most of the game because of John Hughes was out and of course then you have Mike Brown at right guard who's playing well and Chase Parrish who's the leader of this offensive line doing an excellent job uh playing well and really providing great leadership let's say for the rest of the offensive line especially for those two left side guys uh the freshmen so again is when you look at this and and they average uh 4.2 yards per carry you know that's and then you net pass you have Jared Deggy throwing for 301 yards. I mean, again, I mentioned the five penalties. Total offense was 485, 485 yards to 225 against K-State. Now, I know he was a, a freshman quarterback, but, you know, they had Deuce Vaughn over there that they shut down. What did Deuce have? Deuce had 2.4 yards per carry. I think he had, oh, goodness, wait a minute. I know what that is. I got that number. This is bomb. I got it right here. You have 22 net yards. He was also the leading receiver on the team in reception yards with 360. You know what he had? He had two catches, one for five yards and one for minus four. So he had one yard. One yard. You're going to see that as well. I got a whole bunch of stuff. I just want to show you, man. This is good stuff. So, again, you know, you got a number of receptions. Brooke, Brooke Phillips, uh, you know, he had four receptions, a wide receiver. You go back to, you know, Will Howard. He was 19 and 37. You know, he was minus three uh, for picks. 
I mean, that's the only one touchdown. And that touchdown that he threw it was a little bit blown, but, you know, Dre Sean Miller, boy, did I tell you, Dre Sean, five pass breakups. I know he allowed the touchdown, and that was miscommunication. Uh, it wasn't anything athletic. That, that was just purely it, it happens in the game of football. And sometimes you just don't have any control. Uh, but again is i really like what he did man i mean and he played physical he he actually got runner up he did not get the big hit of the week on the neil brown uh television show that we do every week but he was runner up and he was nasty man i'll tell you that was some good stuff but again let's go ahead let's take a look now at what we actually have here uh and some videos that i i took out because you know i got to do some for the for the game and uh or for the tv show and I want to make sure that I do this right for, for here. So, again, let's take a look here. Now, this first play, again, is it's a third and nine. You can see right here they have 11 personnel because you got T.J. Banks. He's going to go in motion. He's going to stop. So what T.J. is going to do is they're going to, they're going to go ahead. And he's going to go crosswise. And he's going to block the defensive end. And it's called the split zone. Everybody's going left, going left, going left. T.J. has got to kick out the end. There should be a crease here for Letty Brown to run through, and there is. But here's the thing, Letty, you can't take him. He had 102 yards rushing, man, 102 and a half, I believe it was. But he was averaging 4.2 yards, and he's just running so hard with four receptions for 28 yards. Letty Brown is turned into a complete, complete back, a running back. He's a bad, bad man. Therefore, you have that bad, bad. Lenny Brown, baddest man in the whole, you know what? That's right. Here we go. Roll it. You see TJ, he's coming in motion. He's in a one-by-one one center right here behind the tackle and the guard. He's got to kick out the defense, man. TJ's getting it down. Tight ends are in the game. O'Loughlin, TJ Banks, doing a good job. Look at this. this you know, this is third nine. Why do you run it? Well, I'm going to tell you why you run it, because in third nine and pass downs, K-State, guess what they do? They put in four defensive ends. Four. Not the, your regular defensive tackles. They want pass rushers in there, so they go out four. So what do the Mounters do? They counter with, hey, we got six guys in the box. They got six guys in the box. That means that Letty's running there, and he's the seventh guy. So if we get all guys out of blocks, which they do here, you're going to see him run for a first down. Third and nine. Third and nine. Let's, let's take a look at the end zone shot. There we go. You see TJ come in. Hell. Oh. Look at this. So he lines up in the gap. So you know this because you got to see where this tight ends. How many times did they sit there and do shifts of two to three mounters moving and then do a motion on top of this? This is a motion in for TJ. And then he's going to come here and he's going to kick out here the uh, defensive end for the split zone. Watch everybody else. They're going this way, this way. They're all blocking here. And watch my man, Letty Brown, get the ball and run through arm tackles because you know what? He's running tough, man. Man, tough. Roll it. There you go. Yes. Oh, yes. Again, so here comes right there. That is Jennings. That's what you call arm tackles. He's not hitting him good up with his shoulder. He's not there for leverage. He's playing outside. He's not playing inside the box where his shoulders are square. What happens? Your shoulders are square. What do you do? You make the tackle usually because you're big and strong. Right here, it does not look like he is big and strong. And there goes Letty. It's third and nine. Run the ball. People are like, why do you run the ball? Well, you got four defensive ends, and you got the, the, the numbers in the box. That's why you run the ball. Go ahead. Let's take a look at this. Oh, I like this. This is good stuff. Okay. So we have T.J. Banks. And, again, this is a 33-yard run by Alex Sinkfield. Now, T.J. is going to go in motion. But what he's going to do is he goes in motion, and then he comes back. I call that the yo-yo. Yo-yo, you know, you get a yo-yo, you throw it down, it comes back up, okay? That's the yo-yo motion. What you see here is the quarterback gets an idea of how they're going to play this, okay? When you when you sit here, look, Hughes, the linebacker, was out here, but he, now he comes in for the motion, and how does he react to it? It comes back out to measure up with T.J. Banks. But, again, you're going to see what here? I talk about this. As our offensive line, 180-plus yards rushing the ball smacking through this is a physical defensive line this was a line that has 
Wyatt Hubert, number 56, the guy who's legit already there, going to be awesome in the NFL. He is solid. You got a freshman, Brandon Yates, okay, a redshirt freshman if you want. Okay, redshirt, because we do have a true freshman, Zach Frazier. But you got that playing on a guy who's ready to go to the NFL. Oh, pretty good. Roll it. Oh, look at this. Now, watch right, right there. Look at TJ Banks. You think he's getting better at blocking? Watch him drive. Watch him keep moving his feet, man. Roll it. There you go. Again, now Alex Steve, what does he do? He runs through arm tackles. We just talked about that with Lenny Brown. And there's an arm tackle right there. And now look at TJ. He's pushing the pile, pushing the pile. Yes. Now look at this. You see Sam James blocking here? We call this perimeter blocking. Yes. And here comes Ollie Jennings. What's he gonna do? Roll it. There we go. Now. Thought, no, well, maybe the play's over. No. Seatfield breaks out, and here he comes. He gets a wave there from quarterback Deggy. Look at that blocking. Look at this block. Look at Ali right Ali, right there. Look at that blocking. That is good. Sam James is going after him. 33 yards, man, because guess what? It's called perimeter blocking by the wide receivers. That's a great job. Here we go. Yo-Yo, check it out. There he comes. He gets a hit. This is what Alex is seeing right here. Look at that. Oh, that's a that's a jump cut. See that? That's a jump cut. That is something that running backs, you got to have it innate in you. It's got to be there because it's so hard to teach. There we go. Continue on. Look at this. Ali's going. More yards, more yards, more yards. Perimeter blocking by the receivers. Great job. Absolutely. Now, okay, I like this right here. You're going to put motion to go empty. Look at the guy right here. This is your tight end. Now, we just, I just showed you two times where TJ Banks was in there blocking. And Michael Laughlin up here in the slot receiver, tight end, slash tight end, is going to get this as third and 12. He's going to get it, and he's going to get the first down because he does a spin move. Now, what I'm trying to get at is you don't go ahead and stick tight ends out there unless – they prove themselves in blocking for the run because defense coordinators know it's a pass. Now, this is third and 12. It's going to be a pass anyways. But the fact that they're rewarding the tight ends, getting the tight ends in the passing game, TJ Banks had a, a touchdown reception last week. Oh, great, great, great stuff. And it's true that I, when I think about it, the running game of the Mountaineers improving is directly because O'Laughlin and Banks are getting better at blocking. In fact, O'Laughlin is excelling at blocking. Roll it. Okay, you're going to see him get this reception. All this is is just an inside slant. No big deal, right? But he finds the hole in the zone. What's more important is this guy here finds the hole in the zone for the guy that's open. Nice. Now, here it is. This is what I like right here. We sell off it. Cat used to be a wide receiver. He understands what's going on. He knows what time of the day it is. I know how to do a spin. I know how to run with that ball. It used to be me. I'm just bigger now. Roll it. <laughs> First down, baby, inside the red zone, and he's all jacked up. Let's go. We're going to check out the next play here. Now, this play is what I love, okay? I've been calling this for a while. And what I want to say here, this is called a read zone, okay? You're going to see everybody's just doing the zone. I showed you the split zone, and this basically is the read zone where he's going to act like he, he can either give the ball off, he can give the ball off to the running back here. I think that's sink belt, or that he can take it and pull it. Now, we've said, or I've said, well, this is me, I've said, man, you got to pull that too because sometimes the outside guy is not honoring and he's going right for the dive and the running back. Well, if he does that, then Jared Deggy right here does a great job in pulling. I love this play. Love it, love it, love it. There you go. Fakes the hand off the sink belt. Oops, there you go. Look at this. Even I could have made that turn right there. Look. He is not even paying attention to the quarterback. He is not honoring that. And that is why this play is successful. But more importantly, it's important that this is on film so that these defenders have to honor the quarterback read. Because in reality, it's, it's a block. 
right? It, it, they're not accounting for him with real blockers on the offensive line because they're saying is that the quarterback's going to block him by his action. Does he give the ball off or is he going to carry it? And that's what he does here. And the defender, just wrong, roll it. Very, very nice, very nice, very nice. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that, and it's on film. So once again, you see this. He fakes the handoff. See, look what Jared's eyes are. He's watching, and this guy is focusing here on Sinkfeld. Pulls it. Yeah, nice job. Good job, good job, good job. Okay, now we're going to go to the defense right here. What you're going to see is Deuce Vaughn. Now, Deuce Vaughn was averaging five yards per rush, and our defense said, not today, Deuce. Yeah, not today, Frosh, freshman. You're going to see my man here, Tony Fields, 15 tackles. Most since David Long back in 2018. You know where he is. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Roll it. So you're going to try to run inside. What he does, he, he's shifty. He can get in there. And then he makes the solid tackle right there. That is a great job. Great job by that. And 15 tackles. Again, Deuce Vaughn had 2.4 yards per carry. <laughs> Ouch. Something. We'll take that every single time. 41 yards total, total rushing. They average 1.8 yards per rush. Now, you're going to see play action pass. What's going to happen? Oh, he's going to throw it out the hoop. Deuce Vaughn, number 22. What does Deuce do? Well, he's has the leading receiver on K-State with 360 yards and receptions. Probably more than tight end was leading in receptions per game, but not receiving yards. And go ahead, look at Sean Mahone come here and make this tackle. What did the head coach, Chris Kleiman of Kansas State, say about this team? They tackle. They know how to tackle. They're one of the best tacklers in the Big 12. you got to love that when you're a defensive player and you're a defensive team and you're a defensive coach, and especially your head coach. Roll it. Do this. Oh, that hurts. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> and ouch. Good job. Way to shut down. <laughs> Way to shut down, Deuce. That is really good stuff. Again, now let's take a look here. We're right now in 20 personnel. What does 20 personnel mean? Well, you got two receivers, you got three receivers because you got two backs, you got zero tight ends in the game. What they're going to do here, he's going to go ahead and throw it. Now, I told you about Drayshawn Miller giving up the touchdown and miscommunication and uh, things go wrong and sometimes, you know, score, score a touchdown. But what I love here is this guy, Drayshawn Miller, he's, he's got no quit in him. He goes out and he had five pass breakups and he said, don't come in my zone today. And he did a fantastic job. Really proud of this cat getting better and better all the time. I'm telling you this defense, the secondary, the defense line, everything's playing that the linebackers are complimenting each other and, and they're, they're, they're improving week by week by week. And they just need to keep playing together. And these last four games they can really excel if they just keep it up if they play this physical if they tackle an open field just like this and pass breakups roll it yes that's a great job look at the break here he sees it he's pouncing that's a confident db because when you're un in unconfident what you're going to do is you're going to hesitate because you're not sure he's really doing the hitch right there and stop it so you're going to be uh Split second, a little bit later, and that sometimes makes all the difference in a catch. But right here, Treshawn Miller, no sirree, man. Coming up, <laughs> PBU, not today, and he's celebrating big time. Now, what I want to show you here is what Coach said to his special teams. And the special teams, again, was huge against Kansas the week before. Kansas State scored two touchdowns by the wide receiver, Brooks by punt returns. So they scored two. Last year, K-State was had four kickoff returns that led the Big 12 and a couple other conferences. Four altogether kickoff returns for touchdowns. So when you see this, and Coach Brown said, man, I was disappointed in his defensive players, first teamers that weren't tackling well on special teams. Well, that changed on Saturday. Roll it. 
you see right here coming right there look at oh now watch this this is really cool you see alonzo adai he is telling his buddy here that he needs to cover and, and get the leverage out here to force this runner in watch him as he does this he's telling him and he's going to help with the tackle here that's a good job look at the point he's saying go ahead get outside make the runner come back to me because i'll make the tackle yes look at that oh big job. look at that he's telling i love that he's communicating as he's running down the field this is really good stuff this is a starter making a tackle excellent job yeah he's fired up you know he's fired up now watch this Watch Sean Mahone. He's number three, I believe, right here. And he's going to play at safety. And he's just going to come down. And he's just going to stop him in his tracks. Roll it. There we go. You see him cruising down. He's playing a little bit of safety off. Now he's going to see where the runner is going to go. And here he comes. Oh, sure tackling Sean Mahone. Interception in the game. Played outstanding. He's really been coming on the last couple of games. you got to love this, man. Coach Brown's sister says he wants his starters to tackle better. No doubt that they are. It's really, really impressive. And, you know, when I watch this, I want you to watch uh, uh, the Wolf Stand on TV this week. And because I go ahead, I show you things that the offense, defense, special teams are doing. <clears throat> it, it, it really is some good stuff. Watch this team grow. We're saying trust the climb. Coach Brown's brought that. Brown brought that in. And, you know, you see the team that they're four and two, lost a close one, Oklahoma State, who's at the top of the Big 12 in standings. Uh, they went ahead again and, and lost an opportunity, in my opinion, against Texas Tech, because I think we're a better team than they are. Uh, and I think we just blew an opportunity. It happens in football. It happens. And then you go ahead against Kansas State, comes in number 16 in the country, and you stifle them defensively, offensively, special teams. That's a team that responds, responds to his coach or their coach, to their coaches. And that's what you want in, in all of this. That is what you want. If you see this team growing. I said, even against Texas Tech, man, they're this close. Man, let's go, Mountaineers. This is exciting times. Enjoy these times because you're going to look back at these and say, I saw them growing. I saw this team getting in Coach Brown's philosophy and, and making moves. Sometimes it was two steps forward <clears throat> and one step back. Sometimes that's just the way it is. My friends, that is the Wolfman Ramble. And I, I have no idea how long I went here. I have absolutely zero idea. Hope it wasn't too long for you. But again, thank you, Little General Stores, the Wolf's Den Extra, uh, giving it out to Little General, man. Hey, by the way, Little General Stores, you know, they donated $65,000 to Children's Hospital, WV Medicine Children's today, uh, with our Kickoff for Kids campaign, which I was involved in, proud to be involved. But, you know, we got to thank all Little General Stores customers, Little General Greg Darby, Corey Beasley. Love you guys so much. Got to got to love on Jerry Lorenz, Greg Lorenz, uh, and the whole Lorenz family for a Kegler Sports Bar and Grill. Uh, they are just one super incredible family, incredible loyal mountaineers. Little General Stores, Kegler Sports Bar and Grill, loyal to the mountaineers. And you know what? I love them, man. So this has been the Wolfman Ramble. And I'm going to see you for the Wolfman Breakdown. Hopefully you check it out before the Texas game. The Longhorn. Oh, I got a lot of good stuff in store for that. And we'll be coming right here from... Wolf's Den, second layer, baby. Boom!